one of my favorite features in DaVinci Resolve Studio is object removal. Let me go ahead and show you how it works. It's extremely useful. So I'm going to switch back to my main screen here. And what I'm going to show you how to do today is I'm going to show you how to take a clip that looks like this with a distraction in the background. This, uh, this little kid was uh, trolling me there in the background. Um, and I'm going to show you how to remove objects in the background using just the color tab in DaVinci Resolve Studio. So here is the removed clip where I removed him from the background. If you're familiar with Photoshop, this is actually a lot like the clone stamp tool, and it's very simple and easy to use. And again, I will mention that I believe you need the studio version of DaVinci Resolve to be able to do this. I don't think you can accomplish this on the free version. Um, so let's go ahead and start with a new clip. So I'm going to copy, uh, hold Alt, and then click and drag, and that copies this clip over. I can go to the Color tab, and I'm going to delete this node right there. Okay, so now we just have a plain clip. I haven't color graded it. I haven't done anything to it other than I need to remove um, this little kid in the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my uh, effects library over here. And first, I'm actually going to add a node. Excuse me, I added the wrong one. Just a corrector, uh, just to keep the effect on a separate um, entity. And then I can rename it, keep it organized. I like to use as few nodes as possible, but this is a great way to just keep myself a little bit organized. Now, I'm going to drag Patch Replacer over to the second node that I created. And immediately, I actually get basically what is effectively the clone stamp tool inside of Photoshop. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to position this so that it covers up the distraction. And I would actually like to pull the clean plate from the left side of the screen. But the problem is with in this particular clip, because I, I rotate a little bit in the clip, the parallaxing doesn't exactly match up. So I'm actually going to have to use uh, this over here to be able to accomplish this. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll have to kind of play with it a little bit to resize it to get it to match up like this so it doesn't overlap with anything. Okay, perfect. Now, um, let's go ahead and play that back. Now, the issue currently is that if I play it back, you'll notice that it still looks, let me turn off the effect, it still looks kind of funky. Uh, there's kind of some weird edging going on and oh boy. Yeah, so you, you can see that it doesn't quite work and it doesn't track with my footage. Okay, so we want to fix a few of those issues that we're having with it. You can't just slap on the clone, basically the what is effectively the clone stamp and then just expect it to uh, expect it to just work. Okay, you have to put in a little bit of uh, you have to dial in the settings a little bit. So let's go ahead and I'm actually going to move my face <laughs> over to this side. Uh, let's go ahead and um, move, let's see. Okay. So let's adjust some of these settings a little bit. So the first thing we want to do, we want to leave it on ellipse. That one tends to work the best for me when I'm re removing objects from like grass or different things in the background, or even I've had instances where I've, where I've removed like, uh, blemishes on skin, uh, or, um, like uh, if, if a mosquito lands on a person or something like that, I can usually actually remove those pretty well. So first we're going to touch up the effects on how it's blending it together. So we're going to uh, actually reduce the variability. Now what that does is, so this, um, the border type, what it's doing is it's trying to fill in the gaps of the border and try to kind of clone and match. So we want to reduce the variability so that it knows what to stick with. So it doesn't flicker throughout the, 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 the duration of the clip. Then we're actually going to do uh, replicate rather than reflect, uh, cause that tends to work better for me. And then we're gonna actually blur the edges just a bit here. So we're gonna blur the edges and it looks like we actually need to move this over just uh, hair. Okay, just like that. So that actually is looking pretty good already. Now you will get the duplicate um, image in the frame, and you might be able to fix that with another node and another replacer, but this is definitely the best way to go about it when you're just removing an object. Okay, so now we need to go to the start of the clip. And what we need to do is we need to track the clip so that it 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 tracks with the footage and it doesn't overlap anything. It doesn't have that weird kind of parallax movement effect like you're looking through like a mirror or a window. Because um, if I go full screen here and press play, you can see it's actually looking pretty good already. Um, but the issue is you can kind of see and there it kind of dips in at the end to 
uh, this gentleman's uh, suit jacket. So we want to uh, make it track the footage so we don't have to do that. To track the footage, what you're going to want to do is make sure you have your node selected and you're going to come down here and go to your power window or, or sorry, not power window, excuse me, I spoke tracker, click on tracker and you want to make sure that you have FX selected. So we're tracking the effects inside of this node. Okay. Uh, and then we want to make sure we're on frame one. So move it all the way to frame one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to select something in the scene to use as reference for the tracking. Um, if you're familiar with uh, two-dimensional tracking, basically what it does is it is you select an area or a point in your in your uh, scene, uh, something that matches the movement of what you want to track uh, to your footage, and then it will um, just automatically track it. You don't have to go in and manually keyframe it. So we're going to go do that, and then we do need to make sure that we select the uh, this right here, which is to add a tracker point. So we'll just make sure that's selected. And I'm going to zoom in. And when I was testing this, uh, when I was testing this, one of the points that worked pretty well for me was this little, I think it's a rock. Um, or actually, no, I think it was actually this right here. Yeah, so I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to do track forward. And what it's going to do is it's going to start tracking forward. And the reason we have to make sure that we're at the beginning of the timeline and then we track forward is because if we're in the middle of the timeline and we track forward, then it's only going to start the tracking halfway through the clip. Um, and you can go back to that point and then do backward tracking, but uh, I prefer to do it this way. And now it actually should be tracked. Uh, it should already be done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect my FX in here. So if I deselect that, it's going to um, hide the, the actual windows and then it's going to show me my clip. And you'll see here that it tracks quite nicely. Now, there's still a little bit of blurring right there that's happening, um, but it looks much, much better than it did before. So you can see here, if I put that in, then you can see the little kid is back there doing his thing. Um, but I can bring in and it just patches it right up nicely. So you can play around with the settings a little bit if you like. Um, so for example, you can blur the edges even just a little bit more maybe. Uh, the only issue I had with that is that his lake kind of comes up in the clip if I do that. So I just decided to uh, put it right about there. And I figured that slight blurring effect was worth the cost of uh, making sure that his leg wasn't in the clip. And another thing you can do is if you're getting a little bit of blurring and mismatching is you can turn your effects overlay back on and you can move the clip to match it up just a little bit better. And then that might help as well. And you can see, let me show you a before. So this is before just like that. And he's just back there doing his thing. Okay. And here is after just like that. And it looks quite good. Definitely something you could include in a final film. Most people aren't going to notice that there's some blurring right there and you can remove objects just like that. So I really hope that you enjoyed this. Let me switch back to here. Hope you enjoyed this video. Just a quick video today of uh, something that I use uh, relatively often when I'm editing, especially wedding films, because, you know, a groomsman will leave a beer can out in the grass or whatever, and I don't have time to move it or forget to move it. So a uh, really handy feature to have inside of DaVinci Resolve Studio. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It would be so appreciated. And comment below, uh, how do you think that you would use this object removal tool? What what would you remove in your footage if if, if you needed to use this? Uh, or if, if maybe that's not your comment, uh, leave a comment below about um, future video that you'd like me to make, and I'd be happy to do that. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.